Before we start to set the W up, I want to do just a little bit of cleanup on my table saw. And what I've done is I've cleaned the saw as well as I possibly could, getting any rust or burrs or contamination off the top. And I've applied a, a, a light coat of dry lube top coat. Now, before we go to set that jig up, what I want to do is I want to check my blade tilt. Okay, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to bring the blade all the way up and put the square against it. And on this side, we look very good. Now, just to make sure that the square is right, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch sides, okay, because if the square is out, right, which it is not, okay, in this case, we're making contact on both sides of the blade all the way up, so we know that the blade is perpendicular to the saw top. Next thing we're going to do is lower that blade and grab the W platform. Now, the platform comes out of the box already assembled. You notice the scales on. We call this wood block with the set screw, the positive stop block. Okay, that's our micro adjusters, what the screws used for. Okay, the arcs cut, bars mounted and the pivot points installed. Now the first thing I want to do, just to make sure we don't have a problem, is I want to put the guide bar in the slot. You notice over here with the line of my blade, this jig's oversized. I just want to make sure that it slides freely and I don't have any binding on the bar. If you have a little bit of a drag at some point, one of the things I'd recommend you try, okay, would be to just take a simple strip of wood and go underneath the saw and just give the bar a tap. Okay, sometimes the screws we use might not be perfectly round. And what's going to happen if you tap that bar is 99% of the time that jig's going to slide just perfect. If the bar doesn't slide right, platform doesn't slide right, I should say, give us a call at the shop and we'll make arrangements to get you another bar. The first step in getting this jig ready is to clean the platform and apply the three mylar strips that we give you that really help this jig slide very freely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over to start with. And I have acetone in this spray bottle. And we're going to spray the platform down very lightly. And just make sure we don't have any grease or contamination on the bottom that's going to give those strips a problem as we install them. Okay? And you're also, while you're doing this, you're going to want to wipe down the first couple inches of the top because these strips are going to wrap around both front and back and end on the top of the platform and that keeps them from rolling under as you use the jig. Okay, So we've got that. The three mylar strips have a paper backing. Okay, And what we're going to do is we're going to strip that backing off and use the adhesive on the strips to attach them to the bottom of the platform. Now, the placement on these isn't critical, okay, but there are specific locations you ought to put them. We want one between the bar and the pivot. We want a second strip here toward the middle of the platform, but we don't want it to go over the opening. What we want to do is get it in here between the bar and the end of the arc, and then we're going to apply one on this outer edge. That'll give this thing plenty of support while we use it, okay? All you need to do is to now you want to make sure your hands are clean or you're going to get fingerprints on these strips they're going to look bad take about an inch and a half of material I don't know whether you can see this on camera I've got about an inch and a half of the mylar and what we're going to do is we're going to start it right here at the very back edge the side it's going to be toward your stomach and I'm going to roll that forward to where it attaches to the, bo to the uh, surface of the top as I pull on the paper what I can do is I can line this up. Now again, it's not super critical, but you want them straight. But the main thing is you want to make sure you don't get any wrinkles or bubbles in these strips because it's going to make the jig slide not quite as easily as it should and the strips will end up wearing out on you a lot faster if that happens. Okay. Now we pull this out. Okay. Make sure we're smooth on the bottom and then we roll the surface right around to the top. We're going to do the same thing with the other two strips. You know, all of us need a good panel cutter. And one of the things you're really going to appreciate about the W is the setup of this jig 
uh, has been patented for quite a while. And what we actually do when we set this up is we set it up to the cut the saw makes, not to the blade, but to the cut the blade actually makes. So if your saw is a little bit out of alignment and not quite perfect, it's not going to make a bit of difference because this jig's still going to work like a champ. You know, I used to build homemade sleds when I first started working, and they always came close, but they never got perfect. And that's one of the reasons that we designed this jig the way we did. Okay, if you take the time to set it up right, well, it doesn't want to come out. There it is. If you set this up the way we show you in this DVD, I guarantee you this will outcut any tool you've ever used. Now, and here goes the one on the outside edge. Now one thing I'm going to do before I flip this over and start to use it, I want to make sure I've got all these rolled in nice and tight. And I'm going to hit those strips with a little of that dry lube too. I'm going to flip it over. Put the bar in a slot. Check to see how it moves. Stick sliding like it's on bearings. A little bit of dirt I got there on the top I want to clean off. Okay. Now. Yeah. What we're going to do now that we've got everything set up is I've got my blade elevated. I know it's set up square to the tabletop. We're going to turn on the saw and run this through and cut the edge off. Shut the saw. As soon as you've got the edge trimmed and the saw is off, what you want to do, stand that edge up. Take a piece of 180, 200 grit paper and just barely swipe that edge a couple times, just enough to break it. I'm going to set it back down. Now what we're going to do at this point is we're going to get the backstop. We're going to get our hardware pack. We're going to show you how you actually start to assemble the dubby. On the back side, at the bottom of the backstop, there's a hardened metal set screw. It's an Allen head screw that we use. When you set this on, what you're going to do is we have two plastic bushings with pilot holes in them. You want both of these to be inserted over your pivot knob and the T-nut that goes in the arc. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this on. Okay, Make sure we're down good. We're going to open the hardware pack. Now in this hardware pack, you're going to find everything you need to set this jig up. You're going to have two knob and stud assemblies. You're going to have the T-nut that we use to hold the arc. Allen wrench to tighten everything down. There's going to be two nylon flat washers. You're going to have one thumb screw. And you're going to have two steel flat washers. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take one of these knobs. We're going to put a steel washer on first and a nylon washer on later. Now the reason we're using two washers is if you ever want to tie these jigs together then you want to put a spanner board across the top, you can actually remove those washers and you'll have about an eighth of an inch more thread that can go down into the T-nut with a spanner board across. On the pivot end all we have to do is go straight down through the hole, right? get started in the T-nut. On the other end, what we're going to do, same procedure, steel washer first, nylon second. I want you to notice the T-nut, when it's installed in the arc properly, is going to stick up past the surface of that platform about an eighth of an inch. What we're going to do is we're going to bring this back and we're going to put it in to the bushing on the bottom. And we're going to barely finger tighten this one. At this point, what you want to do is look down and make sure that that Allen screw that's in that wood block is lined up on that hardened screw. This one, uh, actually, we could adjust this about a sixteenth of an inch. You use the same wrench to adjust that screw 
that you will to set the positive stop. What I want to do is move that out ever so slightly. Too much. You want to make sure that's centered on the screw because there's a countersunk hole in the front of that positive stop block. Okay? And we want to make sure that that head of that screw goes into that hole if we have to. Okay, now I've got that aligned. Okay? And all I want to do at this point is barely finger tighten this. I'm going to lower my blade. I'm going to get my square. And I'm going to put one edge of the square out along the edge of the platform, and we're going to bring the other edge of that square back. Now, one of the things I notice I have to do on this one, these wooden blocks on the end of the backstop are replaceable, in case you mess one up. We make them out of wood, which expands and contracts, and we normally make these a little bit thick. Now, I can feel on this one, as I run my finger across it, that the face of that block is proud. In other words, it sticks out just a little bit past the face of the extrusion we use on the backstop. If I leave it that way, what's going to happen is it's going to kick this end of the material forward, and I'll have a problem with cutting a piece of square and cutting miter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use woodworker's best friend here. I'm going to take this block off. All you have to do is loosen the knobs. I'm going to pull these screws out. I've got some three-quarter inch masking tape. On the high areas where the holes are, the ones that make contact, what we're going to do is we're going to stretch this out. And I want to put a couple strips on what will be the bottom and a couple strips to be the top. This masking tape is nice and thin. You can really get this right. You know, a lot of guys ask us, you know, why do you do that? Well, the reason we make these proud is if we make them the exact depth of the thickness of the backstop and they get out to the area you're in and it's more humid, this block shrinks. Now the surface is behind the face of the backstop and you're going to have a problem with material walking. What I'm going to do to check it, just hold it up here by hand. I want to run my fingers across there. The bottom's perfect. The top, I could probably use one more strip or so. Okay, we're set. And then I want to take my knob. If I can figure out where the hole is. And all I want to do is I want to punch right through that tape. I do this from the inside, because obviously if you do it from the outside, you're going to rip the tape off. Okay. Once I've got that fixed, I put the knob back in, put the nut back on. A lot of times I get lazy and don't even bother putting that bottom knob in. But since we got them, why not? Huh? Gonna push that in, check our fit. Snug it right down. Okay, again, run your finger across there. As long as you're within a thousandth of an inch, you're gonna be fine. Now we're gonna take our square, put one edge against the edge of the platform. Okay. It looks to me, let me check it this way. Our backstop is way forward on this. Okay, in other words, this backstop is too far toward the camera. So I'm going to take the Allen wrench that comes with this. I'm going to pull the W back so I can make this adjustment. I'm going to loosen this. And what I'm going to do is since I have to come to the rear, I'm adjusting counterclockwise. And darn if that doesn't look pretty good right there. I'm going to lock this backstop down. And to check to see whether or not we're perfectly square, what we're going to do is I've got a panel here. Uh, this actually is too scratched up to make a dubby out of. And I'm going to grab a felt tip. We're going to make sure that this edge that I'm going to start with is perfectly straight. You want to make sure you've got a nice straight reference here. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark this start, start, the side start. Starting from the corner toward me, I'm going A, B, 
C, and D corners. Okay? When you do this squaring, you want to make sure you've got at least an 18 to 20 inch panel. We're going to bring the blade up. I'm going to stick the B to A side out past the edge. We're going to cut the B to A. I'm going to rotate so the B to A is now against the face of the backstop. We're going to cut it again. And then we're going to rotate one more time. And we're going to cut it the third time. Okay. I'm going to turn this around and grab my tape measure. Now the B to A side, or I'm sorry, B to D side, measures right at, just on the strong side of 30 and a quarter inches. The C to A side is just a hair under 30 and a quarter inches. Now, since the D to B is long, that means we have to come a little forward. Okay? Want to loosen this? You always want to tap down on this, by the way, whenever you loosen it to rotate. And what we're going to do is I'm going to give it just a tweak. We're going to lock it down. We're going to try it again. This is the most critical part of setting this jig up. And if you take the time to get this perfect, you'll never have to worry about hitting angles. We are 30 and 3 sixteenths. We're 30 and 3 sixteenths. This jig's square. Now that we've got the face of the backstop square to the cut the saw makes, what we're going to do is come out here and adjust the scale. On the outside edge of the scale, there are four pan head Phillips sheet metal screws. There are slots in the side of the scale, and what I'm going to do is I want to loosen these four screws. Now, one thing I really want to emphasize here, do this with a screwdriver, not a cordless, because you're going to end up stripping these out. The scale has about a quarter of an inch adjustment in it. And what I'm going to do is I want to bring the scale to where the back side of the zero line just makes contact with the face of the backstop. In other words, I want to show the full line at zero. We're going, to, we're going to show it here. Every place else on this scale, we're going to split it. And once I've got this thing lined up, all I have to do is to lock this down. Okay, lock the four screws. Now the scale should be set. Now, we're just about to the point where we can test cut a project. If I do that, I'm going to need my stop system. And one thing I did not show you is the T-nut that came in that hardware pack fits in the threaded insert out here in the very end of the backstop and that is what we're going to use to lock our stop system in place. Okay? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this in. Okay, I'm going to make sure my stop system, the stop system will store to the rear and what I'm going to do is make sure I've got it rolled back, and we're just going to lock it down. Now at this time, we're ready to start showing you how you determine whether this jig's set up right or not. Before you start your first project with this, one of the things you really ought to do is trim the excess off the wooden block that we have here toward the uh, saw blade. Now what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to bring my blade up far enough to cut right through that with me at 90 degrees. In other words, the backstop square. We're going to turn on the saw. We're going to run this through. We're going to cut the excess off. Now, what's going to happen as you do your projects, 
In other words, if I do anything other than a square cut, what's going to happen is when I rotate this backstop, it's going to bring a corner out, and we're going to end up rounding this off. So one of the things that you may want to try, you can leave it that way if you want, but one of the things that I recommend people do is I'd set up at four or five different places, right, with my blade up far enough to cut through that. And I cut it at different angles to round it, okay? You notice how we can actually just swing that forward. Now right there, you notice how we've rounded this off. What I can do at this point, if, because now I don't have any support out to the edge of the platform on the face of my wood block, what I can do is I can loosen these knobs and I can bring the rounded part of that block out past the edge. Okay? And if I bring this back to zero and recut this, what's going to happen now is we've created a gap between the wood and the aluminum. So the next time that I pivot this to do an angle, what I can do is I can actually adjust this block and line it right at the edge of the platform and have zero clearance at any angle I'm working at. And that's one of the really neat features of this W. What you've got here is a zero clearance end block that if you mess something up, is sacrificial anyway. Okay? Now, to do our test cuts, I think we ought to do something like, oh, let's do seven sides. This fascinates everybody because the angle's impossible with any other tool in the country. Okay? I'm going to split the line with the number seven. Okay? One of the things you may want to make for yourself, and if we have time in this DVD, I might show you how to do one, is a simple little L bracket. I use this thing all the time, saves all kinds of time and materials. What I'm going to do with this is clamp it to my fence. Okay? I'm going to check my end, make sure I'm lined up right at the edge with that block, and I'm going to put the molding that I've got here where it just barely overhangs, it sticks out past that corner, and what we're going to do, I don't need the blade that high, is I'm going to turn on the saw and I'm going to cut this end and then we're going to adjust our fence and use this as a, a stop system for our rough cuts. Now, let's say if, if I butt into this I got those long enough. I'm going to need another piece of molding. Okay. Okay. Now, there's our seven pieces that we need. With any miter system in the country, all you're doing is cutting length and angle. Our angle scale is much more accurate and easier to use than any other tool out there. Our stop system, by the same token, is extremely versatile. It's out of your way when you don't need it. You loosen the thumb screw, roll it forward, and in this position, with the head toward the end of the arm, we can actually extend this. You won't be able to see this on camera. We can go all the way out to 52 inch lengths. Now what this gives us on a full size saw is the capacity, if any of you here ever want to build some cabinets, to cut panels 24 wide and 52 long, they're going to be perfectly square and all the same length. And that's all you need for a kitchen to fit together. If I pull that all the way out and flip it over and insert the head in first, now we can come down to pieces as short as about an inch to an inch and a half. Okay. Now, while we're talking about the stop system, one of the things I want to explain is the purpose of the two screws here in the head of the backstop. These are 1032 threads and they are actually your micro adjusting screws for length. If you're set up to cut a piece of wood, obviously you'd rather cut it a little bit long rather than a little bit short. These screws can be easily adjusted. When this stop system is locked in place and it's not going to move, if I need to take a 32nd of an inch off the end of a board, all I have to do is give this one full turn. 
A half a turn is a 64th, a quarter turn is 128. These make this an extremely accurate stop system when it comes to length. I mean, there's no reason you can't be working within a couple thousandths of an inch if you need to. Before we do the final cuts on these seven pieces, one of the things I want to show you is another accessory that comes standard with the dubby, and that's our small hold down clamp. Now, these clamps have 35 pounds of hold down pressure. And I've had customers, when they first look at the dubby, say, well, aren't those too small? If 35 pounds of pressure isn't enough to hold a piece of wood while you cut it, you need to do one of two things. Either sharpen your blade or slow down your feed rate. Depending on the saw you own, you're going to mount this clamp either to the right or the left of the pivot knob. Now, as a general rule, saws that tilt to the left have a greater distance between the groove and the blade than they do on the right side. That's because your blade would tip in this direction and they always move this slot out so you can't cut into the head of your miter gauge with your blade tilted. On left tilt saws, we normally mount the clamp to the right of the pivot hole. And what this does is allows us to place that clamp safely between the pivot knob and the edge of the platform. And to mount that clamp, once you've got it installed on that plate, all you do is Take the locking knob out, set the hole in the clamp base over it, okay, and put the locking knob back in. You adjust the clamps for thickness by loosening the wing nut, holding the hex nut, and screwing the spindle up or down. Okay? To cut the opposite end of these pieces, where we had them face up, we're going to flip them over. I'm going to line the end of my piece with the edge of my platform. I'm going to slide the stop in place and lock the thumb screw. Set the clamp. You don't want to have to lean on these. Pressure with your thumb is all that should be required. But one of the things I want to show you now is something you cannot do with a miter gauge. And that's cut a piece of wood that's about three and a half or four inches long with your hands a foot from the blade. check the fit of our project, what we're going to do, this is three-quarter inch masking tape. We're going to stretch it out along the top of the fence, and we're going to position those seven pieces point to point right down the line. You want to make sure you get these point to point, otherwise you'll have a crack in there. Okay? I'd like to ask you a question. Have you ever seen an easier way of holding pieces of a project together? Roll the two ends together. And right there, you see a little project that has absolutely perfect joints. Now, the reason I wanted to do seven sides is our first one. It, and I mentioned a little bit ago, this is basically impossible with other tools. The angle to cut seven sides is 25.714285 degrees by your calculator. Okay. I don't think you're going to hit that with the average shop saw. It's no harder to hit that one than it is four or five, six, or any of the rest of them on our scale because every shape you cut has a marking that clearly shows you where to set the backstop. Since we used a stop against the fence for rough cuts, we really wouldn't consider these pieces scrap. They're more a controlled length cutoff. And one of the things I want to show you, get these all flip the same direction here.
then the cutoffs fit. Now the one thing you'll notice if you try this, the tear out is always on the pieces that are cut from the right side. Okay, in other words, the side I should say that the jig's not on. That's because number one, the W, because we have zero clearance here at the base of the platform and we can also set up zero clearance here at the end block, there's physically no way that that wood has a place to tear out. Another advantage of the W over every miter in the country is since it only swings forward, it automatically forces you to make the cuts on your finish pieces with the grain. That also is going to eliminate tear out. Now that we've got the left side set up, we're going to show you how you set up the right. I've taken this jig, I've cleaned the platform, installed the mylar strips. We know the blade tilt was right. I ran it through and cut it. And again, I broke the edge top and bottom with sandpaper. We're going to set the backstop on. Now I checked the end block, shimmed it the way it needed to be shimmed. And what we're going to do is the same thing we did on the left. Get the T-nut set into the end of the backstop. Get the arc. Pull that against the positive stop. I've got my clamp already assembled. Now again, it goes to the right side because it's a left tilt saw. If this was a Delta contractor where this distance is greater, I'd actually have that plate flipped over. I'd have the clamp mounted on the left side for that mount. Okay. Now I want to make sure I'm against my positive stop. The squarest thing we have in the shop is the panel we cut from the left side. I'm going to set it on the platform, align it back here, and I don't know whether you can see this on camera, we're sticking out almost a quarter of an inch here on the front. Now that means, now remember when you loosen this knob with the arc, always give it that tap down, that gets that T-nut away from the arc, it'll save that platform from wearing. We're going to rotate counterclockwise, this is going to take a bunch. About a 30 second. Now that feels pretty close to perfect. What I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to lock the backstop down, get my Allen wrench out of the way. Now the difference between setting up the right side and left side as far as testing the squaring goes is on this one we need to rotate counterclockwise. If you noticed on the left side when we set it up, I made my first cut, turned it clockwise 90, cut it again, clockwise 90, cut it again, then measured diagonals. What we're going to do on this one is to mark our start and we start here at the corner toward the backstop. Okay, that's A, B, C, and D. Pull this back. Elevate the blade. We do our first cut. Rotate counterclockwise. So the B to C sides over here. Okay. Check it again. And now we cut the C to D. We're 
dead on. Now you can see how nice it is to have an accurate reference and we actually made this. Now this diagonal technique that we just did on measurements, that's the way you ought to be checking all your panels and doors and frames for square. Okay, you can't trust the square to be super accurate. Okay. I'm going to get this out of the way. Come out on the edge of the platform. And loosen those screws. We slide the scale in. Remember to keep the zero line right at the face. You, you want to show the whole line at zero. Okay, we're going to lock that down. Yes, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and cut that end block off. Around the end of that back stop. I think for this one we ought to do an octagon. Now you notice my clamp is way down on this. You notice I can tug on that pretty well and that stock doesn't move. Really don't need the clamp. By the way, in a situation like this, if you've got a clamp and you don't need it, one thing you can always do is just roll it to the rear and get it completely out of the way. bring the stop system in head first to handle the short pieces. I'm going to flip one of these over. What I think I'll do on this is see if I turn that clamp just a little bit inward like this it actually pulls the piece in and toward the stop system. Make two that long. Notice how I turned that clamp. That allows me to pull that short piece right back into the corner between the face of the backstop and the stop system. I don't think there's too many woodworkers out there that would try cutting pieces that size, at least not more than once. 
Now this is where woodworking gets to be fun. You know, woodworking doesn't have to be difficult as you've got accurate accessories. And the best part about the Dubby, and Wood Magazine I think said this better than anybody else, when we were picked as the top cutoff tool in the United States in their magazine article a few years ago, they said sometimes simple is best. And I think you're really going to find that to be true when you buy one of these. You can't be simple, especially when you're no smarter than I am. Perfect joints. One of the things I wanted to do on this DVD is show you a couple simple accessories that you can make yourself to make woodworking more fun and, and a little bit safer. Uh, what we've got here is a piece of hardwood that I've ripped down and planed. Fits in the groove of my table saw and will slide. Okay. The other thing we have is a panel and every measure this. It's about uh, 11 and 5 eighths by about 32 inches. And what I've done is I put a dado groove in the bottom. Now, to space this groove, what I actually did is I measured from my blade over to the slot on the right side, and I've got four inches. And what I want to do is I want to run this through and cut it. So I actually made the distance between the dado and the edge on this four and a quarter. That way, once uh, this thing goes together, we can trim it. I've pre-marked this as to where I want it. What I'm actually going to do is have one strip that will fit in the groove and a couple cleats we can mount across the front to keep this thing from sliding. I've pre-marked this and all I want to do, and this doesn't have to be precise, okay, make sure I lock that thing down. And we're going to cut that. Now, this strip is going to fit into the dado, okay? And what I want to do is I want to just about center it front to back. Uh, just in case something's not perfect, what I want to do first is I'm going to drill some holes in this. I've got a countersick bit in my cordless. And set that into that groove, okay, just like so. And I'm going to put some 5 8 long screws in this. If you wanted to, you could glue this, but if you have a problem with the alignment of anything, that have to pull that strip out of that platform. That glue's going to make it darn hard to do. Besides that, once this thing's in place, it really doesn't move. And I'll show you what we're going to use it for. Make sure it slides, okay, which it does. It's a little bindy on this end, but and what we're going to do, bring the blade up, cut this edge, same as we did the W platform.
break that in. about three screws in these. I'm going to use one as a reference. Put that right against the edge. Grab a couple more screws. And by using the one strip as a reference. I can keep this thing in just a little bit from the edge, which I want to do. Wish I'd have brought a magnetic bit holder. Okay, it's pretty good there. Now that we've got that one on, what I need to do is to mark. My saw is 27 inches deep. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to measure. And I'm going to go about 27, about a 16th inch. I'm going to make it just a little bit proud. I don't want this thing to be a snug fit on there. One of the nice parts about making things like this. It's not that critical, but they sure make a world of difference when it comes to safety and accuracy. And I'm going to line that up about like so. Now, the purpose of this little panel, by the way, and I'm sure you must have noticed when we were, were doing our first project, is these pieces, when they come off the W, will drop. Okay? And when a piece of wood gets cut through, what happens is the last part of the cut, okay, that wood's going to tend to drop. And that's what causes kickback. And what this panel's going to do is eliminate any chance of that happening. Now, what should happen is when I put this on the saw, Okay. Line this up. That panel is cleated in both directions. It can't move but a little bit front to back. Physically impossible to move side to side. Now, the advantage of this, let me get this out of the way so I can show you, is now what happens is you have a surface on the right side exactly the same height as it is on the W. And to show you, just a couple cuts here. Right? All we're doing is we're eliminating the drop off that gives us the possibility of having kickback. Okay? Now, what I used here was see this? See? the wind from the blade might blow the piece back, but it's never going to throw it. This is material that obviously we had in the shop that was scrapped because it wasn't good enough to make a W out of. Any piece of half inch MDF can do exactly the same thing. It'll only take you 10 or 15 minutes to make one of these support panels and I tell you it is well worth doing. If you bought both sides of the W, one of the things that these are extremely handy for 
is if you tie them together as a one cut panel cutter. Now when the magazines all pick the W as the best panel cutter in the United States, they only use the left side. But there's definitely uh, advantages to having both. What I have here is a piece of oak I made up. It's about 5 sixteenths thick, inch and a half wide, and 42 inches long. What we're actually going to do with this is set it on the platform. Okay, and I'm going to kind of mark the center line of it. And I want to pull the four locking knobs out. Now on the dubby, the locking knob from the pivot to the arc, they're 14 inches on center. Depending on the saw, this distance changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on the top of the backstop the center line of those holes. Okay? And according to my old trusty Stanley, it is three and three quarters, I'm going to call it three and thirteen sixteenths between those holes. Okay? As a matter of fact, I'm going to write that down on this. If I visualize where I want my first hole, okay, and I'm going to come in 14 inches. Now in this case, since I'm using the one inch mark, we're going to mark this at 15, add 3 and 13 sixteenths, that would be 18 and 13 sixteenths, and 14 inches from that would be 32 and 13 sixteenths. I want to mark those locations. do is I'm going to set this board on its edge, okay, and these holes look perfect, that's going to work, and that's going to work, okay. I'll grab me a backer board here. Now, these are quarter twenty studs that we use to hold the W together, okay? From the center of the hole to the face of the backstop is an inch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set my square at 7 eighths. I want to hold that front edge back. I don't want it sticking out past. And what we're going to do is come in here and mark very carefully where we want those holes to be. You can use a drill bit up to three eighths to drill these holes because it's it's really not critical what you're doing. You're making a spanner board out, and once you tighten everything down, the board's not going to move anyway. Okay. Probably should take sandpaper to it, but for purpose of demonstration, I guess you guys know how to do that. What we're going to do, wrong one. Actually, in this case, when you've got the spanner board on, these studs aren't going to be long enough. 
to take your clamps off. If you want to use the clamps with this, you can take them off the plate and use wood screws to hold them to the strips. If you need extra clamps to do that, give us a call at the shop. We'll be happy to set you up. Now this one, the T-nut dropped down out of the platform, so what I'm going to have to do actually lift this thing. Now you want to make sure you have no sawdust whatsoever along the face of that. Take a straight piece of material. Okay? Squeeze on the outsides to make sure that the faces are straight with one another. Everything's set up parallel. Okay. And when you lock these down, what that's going to do is it's going to tie these jigs together so they slide as one. Now, people say, why would I want to do that? A couple months ago, we did a new kitchen for our daughter Tammy and her husband Bob. And in that kitchen, we had hundreds, literally hundreds, of pieces of material that needed to be cut to length, all square. What we did is with the jigs tied together, we could actually bring the stop system on the right side to whatever length we were going to need and lock it. And then when we were working with our material, the only thing I've got to play with is this molding. But what we'd do is we'd have a strip that would be too long. Matter of fact, let me shorten this up a bit just for demo. And what we could do would be to make our first cut. Once we had that cut done, when we cut the first one to length, we automatically squared the one behind it. So not only did this save us time, it also saved us a tremendous amount of wasted cuts and material. This is an outstanding system, even if you only have the one jig, but you buy both of them. You've got a set of cutoff tools here that no products in the country can compete with for simplicity and accuracy. I hope you've enjoyed our presentation on the W and our other tools. If you have any questions, send us an email. You can get through to us at Inline Industries on our website. It's www.in dash the hyphen l i n e industries dot com i thank you for your interest and happy woodworking